Okay, this video is on the 2017 uh, FRQ number four. It's the successor array. Um, this is a good program that uh, uh, should cover your understanding of 2D arrays. Um, and it's also a typical type of, pro type of program I'm seeing on FRQs where you create one method and then on the next question you have to be able to implement that method that you use so uh, let's go through this quickly since this question involves reasoning about a two-dimensional array of integers you will write two static methods both of which are in a single enclosing class named successors uh, and that is not shown these methods process a 2D integer array that contains consecutive values. Each of these integers may be in any position in the 2D array or 2D integer array. For example, the following 2D integer array with three rows. So there's one, two, three rows, one, two, three, four columns. Contains integers five through 16 inclusively. So five through 16, including five and 16. All right, the following position class is used to represent positions in the integer array. The notation R comma C will be used to refer to a position object with uh, row R and column C. Okay, so write a static method find position that takes a an integer value in a 2D array integer array and returns the position of the integer in the given 2D uh, integer array. If the integer is not an element of the 2D integer array, the method returns null. For example, assume that array R is the 2D integer array shown at the beginning of the question. The call, so it's passed in the number 8 and the 2D array. Uh, would return the position 2, 1. Let's see. Okay. So um, row 2, column 1, 8 returns. Okay. Uh, 17R would return no. Yeah, remember it's only numbers 5 through 16, right? So 17 is not on here, so it will return no. All right, so public static position, so I wrote that down already. All right, so um, when you're doing 2D arrays, you always do your for loop. I always do int row equals zero. Uh, row is gonna be less, less than the int array dot length, right? and row plus plus uh, then we always have to go through the columns in the each row columns going to be less than the int r Remember, you put that in there, that'll give you uh, the length of the column in row zero. And since each uh, 2D array has the same number of columns in it, um, <coughs> should return uh, four right there, because there's four columns. Uh, and this is pretty easy, so we're just looking to see if the number exists in here so if um, int r at the row and column position if that's equal to the number that's passed in then we re return um, the new position at row call okay and so this position right here is um, is this it 
The following position class is used to represent positions in the integer array. Position RC will be used to refer to a position object with row R in column C. Constructs a position object with row C. So um, it's just telling you where it is in here. So that's that. Um, and if it's not found, then you just return null. Okay, that's real easy. B is also pretty easy. It says write a static method. Now there's a lot of reading to this, but it's real simple. It says write a static method get successor array returns a 2D successor array of positions created from, okay, the successor of an integer value is the integer that is one greater than that value. For example, the su successor of eight is nine. Um, let's see here. A 2D successor array shows the position of the successor of each element in a given um, 2D integer array. Um, all right, so basically it's this, right? Uh, the successor to 15 is 16 right here, and it's in position 1, 1. The successor to 5 is 6, which is in position 1, 3. Okay, and you can see that. Uh, position to 16 is null because, remember, it's outside the range. So um, you've got null in position 1, 1 right here. Uh, I don't know. Seven, that's in position uh, two down, one over, it's eight. So basically you got to run through each element and then you got to call what you did right here, right? Because doesn't this find to see if it, if it exists? Now the only thing is you have to be able to add one to the row in the column. So that's that's the only thing that's a little bit tricky on this that you don't want to make a mistake on, but it still um, should be pretty easy. All right. So we're going to create a position uh, 2D array. It's going to be called new array. And it's got int r dot length, and it has int r at zero dot length. All right, let's make this larger. Okay, that should set up our new um, array that we're going to create here. Because remember, we need to basically create a new array that looks like this. Okay. Um, so then we do our, we can do some copying and pasting here. And inside here, we assign our new array in the row column. We set that equal to, we've got to find the position. Remember, we got to find it, see if it exists only it's one uh, above um, where we're at. So int r, and that would be row, this is the num. Okay, right here, we're going to pass this in. This is the row and the column, so we find it, and we have to make sure it's plus one. So if, if we're looking for position seven, the successor would be eight. So eight would get passed in here, okay? And um, int r is also passed in for the um, array. 
and we just return the new R. Okay, so right here it either finds it and gives it the position and it stores it in the new array or it returns null and I would put null in the new array like it does right here. Okay, so go through this one, but that one was uh, fairly easy. Um, and you should be able to know how to do this. Make sure that you're understanding how to reuse code. Um, you wouldn't want to have to write this over again right here. Um, you just need to call the, the method and have you know either the position return or null return and then that gets stored in the new array. So um, 